decide to go out. So Krepper, we are in picks and bans. Callista taken away from Tabs. Elements, let's see what he responds with. So forgiven in his nature, he's not a Callista player. He's actually not much of a Sivir player either. Either like he'll he used to tend a lot to you know the Graves and Lucian. You know Lucian definitely top pick of those two in a meta right now. So we might see him pick that up. Uh, we mentioned it earlier. You know Azir and Cassiopeia are both like you know combined really strong in the mid lane. So you might see uh, elements leading with Cassiopeia. Man. I mean, means maybe another Azir ban too. Uh, maybe leaving a lot of the jungles open, but Gambit replies here with Rek'Sai. Uh, see how this goes on. So, game three of the day, yeah. a lot a lot more similar um, champion priority to what we saw out of the opening match of the day between Fnatic and UOL. The Gragas taken away there from Diamond, again, one of the top tier junglers. Gambit, of course, they have got a different coach this split, going to move Dimitri, one of the a member who's been in the team a very long time, but these teams are taking their times with these bans, Crepo. Yeah, there's a lot of mind games in the current uh, pick and ban uh, like scene right now because they ban out Gragas in response to the Rex side, at least Sejuani open, but is Gamut really gonna first pick Sejuani? You know, we know Diamond likes to play it and if he does, you know, Dexter probably has an answer ready, so they're probably not gonna see a ban or a first pick on that. LeBlanc taken away from uh, Frogan, so LeBlanc's out, Cassiopeia's out, Azir is open. We might see an Azir ban here. Final Victor ban. This means that Elements Elements knows that uh, if Gamut picks a zero right here, Elements has a plan. I hope so at least. <laughs> well, we're, we're we're about to find out if anybody was going to make that prediction. I'd like to think you would be in one of the better spots to do so. Yeah, Gamut. we had many plans back in the but day. But the other thing then is where does Dexter go in the jungle with Gragas and Rexai off the table? Sejuani is up. The Azir is first pick. Well, so Sejuani maybe. All of the all of the ingredients are there. What do Elements want in reply? You know, both of these teams are going to have drastically different play styles to what we saw in the spring split. For Elements, it's because they have four new players. For Gambit, it's because Forgiven brings so much weight in his play style alone. We need to see how this works out. If I was there, I'd uh, I'd pick I'd lock in Bard already. Um, no joke, actually, I think he's really good against the likes of Azir. You can warm him in it and uh, basically CC him, um, you know, from far with the ulti, even though he has a dash, but then you can can lock him down. But, uh, other than that, I don't know. I think they should steal away Sejuani maybe, but then they they have the risk that the Diamond might play an aggressive jungler here. Uh, Nidalee is still open, might still be played. Had some success there. Um, let's just see what Elements replies with and see what happens. I mean, Nidalee was one of Diamond's most played champions. Three games in the regular split, he played it in the playoffs as well, but unfortunately they didn't make it past the quarterfinals. And Gambit, of course, ran that heavy tank style of gameplay when we last saw them. Elements going a slightly different direction. They've got that Alistair for support. They've got that Maokai for the top lane. So a lot of safety so in those two picks. Did they put JO on, on like a tank that can hold his own, you know, can do well with some early ganks, but generally is, is played passively in the top lane to soak up damage. And this opens up for Frog and Taps to carry. I like that uh, for the Elements kind of style. I think Alistair, we, we highlighted earlier, fantastic support right now. However, these are two champions in, in five on five team fights. That can get punished by an Azir ultimate really hard, you know. They go in, they get pushed back out. They have no way of getting back into this fight. Um, let's see what uh, Edward reacts with. Thresh into Alistar, not too big of a fan. I think I think it's laneable in, in any sense, but uh, I don't think there's a hard counter for Alistar. You just have to play around his, his kit. And let's see what uh, what Gamut goes for the team comp here. Lucian, staple pickup for uh, for uh, Gamut Gaming here for Forgiven. So taking back, taking a step back at the draft pack, we, we could have predicted the Azir pick, and I think Elements was aware, so they knew that was coming. They knew Lucian was coming, so they must have a plan, and it seems like Urgot was left open. Kind of forgot about that, and I think that's really big. Sivir is still a possibility, but running high speed into an Azir wall, you know, may come to bite you. You might, may rather want to shut down for giving in lane, if you can, with the Urgot. Well, we'll see what uh, Elements do decide to lock in. As far as Gambit's game plan, Readable. What's you know, everything's do? gone in. If they want to opt in to, I mean, you know, that Urgot, you could throw mid as well. It's not too impossible, not really into the Azir. No, no, that's actually a really good point. I totally forgot about that. That's actually a really good point. That might actually happen here. So we have magic damage on the jungle, magic damage on the support, magic damage on the top lane, and it opens up the opportunity to play Urgot mid, which is one of the few good mid picks left because Victor is out of the equation, LeBlanc's out of the equation. You might actually be right on the money here. And talking about that, when you run through the magic damage, something that really sticks out in my mind from talking to Froggen in the spring split was whenever team comps were decided, at least according to Froggen and how he explained it, was there are certain checklists he likes to talk about, certain things he likes to look for. Elements are currently lacking some wave clear, which is one of the concerns you have to talk about. Siva is still open if they wanted to try supplement that and use 
the mobility of Sivir to get around maybe the wall or the soldiers for the Zia. There are possibilities here. We got punished really hard by Gamut in the Splink Split by opting for a combination with very low wave clear and not enough pressure in the mid lane. They basically played this siege comp with Nidalee, taking out tower by tower by tower. You know, Lucian's okay at taking towers. The Zia is really good at taking towers. Um, Evelyn pick up here uh, in the jungle uh, for Diamond. Pretty good, uh, like, fourth choice. It's it's happened in the other game as well. Three jungles out, Sejuani, Rek'Sai, Gragas. And then the next pick is uh, Kulov introduced it again at MSI, the Evelyn. And it is something that Diamond has quite a history on as well. Definitely played that multiple times in the past. So Gambit, multiple options with their team comp. They can do a large number of things thanks to the versatility of Azir and Lucian. And the question on our minds, does Froggen lock in Orianna, or does Tabs maybe lock in Sivir, maybe lock in something else? There's not a lot of magic damage. So the Orianna would supplement that, as well as giving you all that teamfight power. Yeah, the Orianna, it feels so short range to me. It feels very, very short range and very tricky to play. And, and with, with good positioning from Gambit and, and like choke points, etc., in the nice zero ulti coming out from Betsy, might get tricky. Looks like he's opting for maybe Vladimir. Scales better, I think. Okay, That's so what, is, mid lane. what does this mean now for the team comps? Froggen on Vlad, Tabs on Urgot, different champions from what we've seen all day, but definitely looking for very long, drawn out team fights. Those are a lot of survive, a lot of targets to get through. No splitlish to this. Is, if you've ever played Yu Gi Oh!, this is what they call an Exodia comp. You know, you have the left leg of the Forbidden one, the right leg of the Forbidden one, and if you get them all together, you get that wombo combo, stompy AoE fight. But by God, if you don't get all your cards on the table right in the middle in a fight, you're probably going to lose because there's Crippo. no split push from Maokai. There's no split push. Like, Vladimir can split push, yeah, but they basically want to set up these one more combo ultimates. Right, Trev? I'm done! <laughs> You're in your third game in the summer split and you're quoting Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I'm running, I'm running I don't out of comparisons. Know, I don't know how many people are going to keep up with that one. I appreciate and respect that, but I think you're a brave, brave man. The one thing I do see from Elements is so little wave clear. I am terrified for them if they ever fall behind and all of a sudden they've got to deal with those Azir soldiers and, and, and Lucian and Thresh in their face. Kind of tricky. Without wave clear, it's easy to flank if you have a lot of wave clear, like, like you said, they have no wave clear, right? And it's easy to flank if you have a, a lot of wave clear setting up for those flanks, buying yourself time when, when Gambit is knocking on your door. But at the same time, you know, you don't have the time because they'll just push through mid. And that means they'll, they'll face the Azir wall up front. And my eyes are on Betsy, and the one thing that speaks against him, farm priority number one, Cabochard. Farm priority one number one, forgiven. Betsy ranked eighth in mid laners to get the farm out of all teams, farm share in the game. That means he has almost nothing to work with while he is the staple. He's the crux of the gamut composition. Well, we will find out if he's going to make that one work. We're loading up onto the roof for the third time in the summer split. Gambit in the blue trunks, Elements in the red trunks. Two teams that, truthfully, I have no idea how to evaluate their effective strengths coming into the split. And if elements different get play pushed. styles as well. If elements get pushed on all three lanes, this can get ugly really quickly. Because out of all junglers that like invading, Diamond Prox is definitely one of them. You know, and with with a slippery Eve, not knowing where she is, and having the possibility of her being in your jungle in addition to playing a weak early clearing jungle like Sejuani that goes pretty low on the clears, could prove very very dangerous. And we'll see if it does. Of course, for everybody that is watching, Forgiven has replaced Pinoy as the AD carry, and Gosu Pepper is, in fact, Edward. He's gone back to his original nickname from several years ago before he changed it to Ed Ward with a capitalization on that W. So it's only one new player for anybody who's returning from the Spring Split. Good deep ward on, on the camp from Elements here. I want to somehow figure out where Evelyn starts because you don't have to see her. If you see her at one camp, you can pretty much predict what she's going to do next in at least the next minute and a half. Give you enough information to play around and play relatively safe. But I just want to reiterate that point. I think Azir can push in Vladimir. I think Nar can push in Maokai. And I can think Lucian Thresh can push in Urgot, Alistair, especially early levels. So this might be triple pressure for uh, Elements to deal with. And that might be very rough combined with an early game jungler. Uh, early struggling jungler like Sijuani. And we'll see what Dexter, uh, rather Diamond, decides to do if his lanes go aggressive. Where does Diamond Prox place his priority on that particular map? We do see JY going top and Froggen dancing just between the two sand soldiers. So they know where Dexter starts. Really a big train. And that's really huge. Deep Ward coming out. They know exactly where he is, so they can predict his movement, especially on a pretty cool jungle like Sejuani. Uh, double camp here uh, from the bot lanes. 
see how that evolves. Helps Urgot, helps Urgot Alistar more than it helps Trishulshin. Well, I definitely want to take a look at this bottom lane because it's two duo lanes that we've not seen yet in summer. And Lucian, we don't see a whole lot of around the world. So what do you expect at these level twos? It looks like Forgiven and Ursh and Pepper are going to be in a good position to get that early one. Yeah, basically, Elmans is yielding the pressure here. They already overpushed. Yes, they're uh, level two, Pepper and Forgiven, but uh, they push so hard that they're actually not going to deny too many minions. But this is Forgiven style. He'll stack that big wave. And where other carries usually, you know, give away a lot of CS, Forgiven is so potent at poking on the tower that Taz might actually have to drop some CS. And we see Betsy's already knocking on the door. They know where Sichuani is because they know where she started. So Gambit, ha in theory, has all the information here. Well, he seems to be playing around that information. A lot of pressure from Betsy. He was pushing Froggen's Vladimir in, as you talked about. And for Diamond, I want to see way. how this Evelyn works, because, you know, we looked at Amazing's Evelyn in the previous game, and I think it did exactly what Origin needed it to do, but you never felt like the early game presence or that invisibility was super impactful. And if you know the game really well, you know there's almost no threat from Sejuani again. Good hook by Edward. And a double flay from Gosu Pepper. Forgiven and Gosu really applying the damage to Tabs and Promise Cube. We need to see what sort of CS advantage it eventually yields to though. Yeah, and they're not, they're basically Alistair at this level too has to stay heal. So Edward's, or Gosu Pepper rather, is not scared of getting flash queued and then knocked into the tower because he sees the heal come out. Good poking reaction. And they weren't scared of the gank. Another hook on Tabs. Again, Tabs. Flying to the Woolite School of AD Carry, eating every death sentence in lane. And this is how Forgiven likes to play, right? He pushes you into the tower, and this makes your behavior predictable. You are going to go for that CS, and I will hook you in reaction. You know, and yes, I might not be able to kill you because I don't have the distance, but we'll whittle you down and we'll just out sustain you eventually, and then punish you really hard. Forgiven builds up a small lead up until the point where you're broken, and he's not, and then he starts really hammering down. And we'll see whether or not they can keep that one up. Luckily, on the side of Elements, promised you can heal up tabs. But as long as his mana is relevant, Gosu does not connect with that flay. Let's take a look at the rest of the map. We've not actually poked our eyes up top. Small CS advantage for Kabashad. However, JWoww should be able to even that up shortly. Nah into Maokai. I'm not expecting a huge amount of action without jungler interaction up top. It's going to be interesting to see who can impact with their teleports. So much simpler on a Maokai than a Nah. Yeah, no, no uh, counter jungling just from Dion. He has a liberty to basically go anywhere on the map that, that he wants because all his lanes have the control. I'd like to see Gambit use that to their advantage. Well, they do have time. One thing we've looked at, uh, both of the previous games, Krepo, have come in around 36, 37 minutes um, average game time. And they've all actually had relatively slow-ish early games. With Fnatic and URNL, it was that sort of four versus zero map swapping until the eventual tower dive in this particular matchup as the previous is just standard farming but look at this forgiven 20 cs up thanks to all of that pressure from the early game yeah and dexter can't really do anything because all his lanes are pushed in his ganks will if he gets a gank off it will be incredibly telegraphed diamonds finally moving into the jungle getting some more information on elements and while the goal is even, if you're watching uh, online right here, the biggest problem and what you don't see is the pressure meter and how that's affecting the game. All these towers are getting chipped away at, you know, and that will result in a swing maybe in five minutes, maybe 10 minutes from now, and all the towers from Gambit are 100% HP because nobody's been even close. I think half the Elements members haven't even seen the towers. Well, I like the idea of the pressure meter. I think I'm going to be revisiting this one with you in uh, games to come. And we'll see if... If the pressure is going to cause elements to break, because again, remember, it's only Frogan that's come back from the spring split. Promise you, this is his first stage, first game on stage. And for the, you know, Dexter and Tabs, these are returning guys to the setup. Tabs already under a lot of pressure. Now, a little niche thing you can do here is push in his wave, 55 CS, base for BF Sword, and force Urgot to stick on like a longsword tier and maybe another longsword. Really big disparity, but to do that, you, you relinquish your pressure. So Forgiven might want to do the same thing. Urgot scales pretty awkwardly, like early. You want to kind of deny his tier at the same time. So I think Forgiven will go for the BF pickaxe timing, force a really late tier on Urgot, and then not, Urgot won't be able to trade either, you know. But Elements is all about this level 6 fight. You know? They want to level, get level 6 and group up for an objective, but if Gambit prevents them from grouping, they're going to have a rough time. I want to keep my eye on Diamond Prox as well, how he decides to itemize this Evelyn. He was such a big fan of the Warrior Enchant in the Spring Split when many, many people were not using it to moving away. And, you know, traditionally we've seen Warrior Enchant in Evelyn, but 
Amp time, maybe. We'll see something different. Only 300 gold ahead here, though. Like, look at the lanes. Brogan's farming really well in that mid lane. Wow, push. Uh, do, you expect, do you expect anything different from Froggen? No. Even in the Vlad into a Zia, etc. No, he's, he's farming sustaining really well. So Gambit's like, they're puncturing the wall, but they're not breaking it, you know? They just don't have a Sledgehammer ready yet. So if Elements can hang on and get a good fight, they can definitely like take control of this game. But it's, it's pretty even right now. I'm just worried about their towers. Well, we'll see if that worry causes Elements any problems, Crepo. We did see uh, Dex actually hanging out in the tri-bush. He's got access to Glacial Prism. Tabs relatively close to level 6, I believe. Catch an eye on that experience meter in a moment. And once the position reverser and Glacial Prism are available, that's a, a lot of CC. I mean, Dex is still hanging around. He's been here for a very long time. Yeah, I think he might even be scared to go into his red jungle. I'm... I don't want to say disappointed in Diamond Prox, but I would have liked to see some more counter jungle. And given that he had three pressuring lanes, I would have liked him to find Dexter, chunk him out, and take control of that the game that way. And maybe Snowball or Dragon and get something. Because right now they're going toe to toe. Yes, they're pushing, but CS is pretty even across the board. Minus forgiven, but that's you know, expected. Yeah, and it's the same 20 CS advantage that we've seen all game long. We do finally see the back timing, so it is going to be that uh, BF plus pickaxe. I think so. That's the most likely. Um, He's going BF double longsword. May not have enough gold, but he might also go for a, for a Brutalizer, I think, into... Uh, Ghost Blade? Ghost Blade? Yeah, the Ghost hasn't changed. That might be uh, <laughs> to give a... Yeah, I'm just guessing. You guys should know that. But yeah, let's, let's just assume it hasn't changed. You haven't needed to build one in a very long time, Crepo. That is true. So I should know it regardless. I'll, I'll, I'll let you off. We did see some backs all across the board. Cabochard grabbed himself that Giant's Belt as well as the Hex Drinker. Wow grabbed himself a couple of odds and ends. Catalyst, the Ruby Crystal. We do see with Dexter's relatively late second back. He's actually picked up that Cinder Hulk now as well. Maybe third back. I missed it. And again, we're just going to go back to this farming. So 10 minutes of fast approaching, even on gold. That CS advantage that Tabs had built up has been closed. And Mandamune picked up as well. That's important for Tabs to at least try to trade with Forgiven. If he gets a few Acid Hunters from range. Maybe that can re relinquish some of that pressure and lower the meters. The no, I, meter I think meters. Elements is definitely happy with the way this game's going so far. They could have gotten punished and they survived arguably the roughest part of the game. It looks like uh, some action on bot lane. Wow, this is a 2v2. It's going to turn into a 2v3. We do see the hyperkinetic position reverser. A good teleport from Jaywal is potentially going to set up a kill here. That is a beautiful flash lantern from Gosu Pepper. He keeps forgiven alive but in the back line. Cabo Shard is teleported in. Now Jaywal is a man out of position. He's forced to flash defensively. Gosu Pepper lands the death sentence. That's a flash pulverized from Promise Q as Cabo Shard is knocked backwards and Froggen joins in for the fray. The this is a five-on-five five party, and Betsy is the target. One more lantern from Gosu X Edward, and it's elements that get the kill when everyone comes to play. By our powers combined, we are uh, <laughs> Exodia. But that's what I mean, right? If your fight goes long enough and some beautiful re-engages left and right, I think elements play it pretty clean. I think Gamut got greedy once that extra hook. If Edward, if Ghost of Pepper wasn't so good at landing hooks, I think they would have gotten out there uh, zero for zero. Elmas did get the pressure, but good good positioning by Dexter. You know, they forced the play on bottom, and they had the TPs ready, but they had the jungle ready in addition there too. Even though Froggen was pressured and Betsy are first, they still survived. Really good fight. A lot, a lot of niche, like tiny things that both players, uh, both teams did really well in my opinion. But Elements comes out one to zero, and uh, yeah, they're staying into this game. 500 gold lead right now. Interesting, interesting developments. A little bit down on CS in the AD carry, but obviously the kill over to Elements and. Interesting team play. I'm looking forward to seeing these team fights play out. You saw how long that previous one took because you've got a lot of tankiness to burn through on actually both sides. Well, one thing that was actually borderline and hilarious was that Froggen pulled basically under the zero. LT. He slid under, underneath, you know, basically untouchable. And I, maybe that's something why he picked that matchup because the zero basically when it's pretty predictable when he's going to ult into a fight, and Froggen managed to get out of there. Diamond's ganking middle, I know. Oh, he's going to need to get out again. That's a very early sanguine pull. The, Conquering Sands. Good flash. Throws Frog and backwards. Yeah, flash burned. We did see him use that ghost to get to the bottom lane earlier. That means if Betsy and Diamond can find an opportunity for Agonies, maybe they can get Frog. And then there's the tower pressure that you had touched on many minutes ago, Crepo. A yeah. lot more damage, a lot more chipping away as this mini wave gets cleared. And this is how Gambit basically can claw back into this game. If the tower is half HP and you, you basically chunk somebody out of lane, you can almost at this point in the game take it down. Whereas Elements, 
imagine they push somebody out of the lane, they can maybe take half HP of that tower, but then that tower is still fully alive and functioning, and that's the difference. Cabochard throwing Maokai into the wall here. Well, let's see. It's going to be one of the longest fights we'll ever have if JWoww sticks to it. Ends up just walking away, and Cabochard committed everything there. I do want to touch one thing. You, you, you know, we've looked at these towers. Elements are going to take forever to take towers down. Vladimir is one of, if not the worst champion to take towers down. Just build some AP, but Mango Tanky, we'll see where he goes with Root. Urgot, and then so many melee champions. In a it's 1v1 really split difficult. Push, in a 1v1 split with Vladimir, can actually chunk out the enemy and take the tower that way. But yeah, straight on 5 man Siege, they're just going to ignore the towers, you know? Just going to dive him. Just AOE him. But that, that's going to be hard, you know? So what, Gam what Elements wants to do is draw Gambit out. Uh, bait him into an objective and then flank him. Well, Froggen and Dexter, they've killed Diamond. So this is a really, really beautiful snowball play. They saw the Diamond base, Betsy wanted the base. Uh, Dexter slowed down Betsy's base, enough for Froggen to come in. They pushed in the wave, now they had the pressure, disappeared into the dark, moved into the jungle and found Evelyn there. This is like chain reaction in League of Legends. And I really like seeing this, going aggressive with your jungle when you know the enemy's in base. They knew if somebody face checks, Betsy's likely not to be there in time and really solid move. And this is what Amazing said on the desk earlier. Yeah, Eve is prone to being blown up and we just start there. Uh, well played by Elements, planning a few steps ahead. As we do see the first tower falls and surprise, surprise, it is forgiven securing yet another first tower of the game. Promise you has roamed up to aid the low hit points Froggen. But we do see that Diamond is coming up to reply. So, uh, Krepo, teleports are not available yet for either of these top laners, and we're starting to, to see some shuffling around the map. Yeah, very crucial point. They push him bot wave. Tabs is busy dealing with that. Alistair has shown all the information is the map for Gambit. Where are they going to go? Are they going to take another tower? Because that will snowball a third tower pretty immediately right after. So this is a very crucial moment of the game right now. And the decision seems to be middle. Gosu Pepper's moving that way. Pickaxe and Brutalizer completed for Forgiven. Brutalizer picked up for Tabs as well. And you can see Tabs making his way he doesn't towards know to the do mid right lane. He wants not to farm, wants to go mid. The decision, I mean, there's wards in uh, Gambit's jungle, but they've only just seen Ghost of Pepper. Yeah, they know what's coming, but sometimes you just can't stop it. You know, Tabs is like, do I drop this wave? Do you need me mid? And they're like, yeah, well, I don't think we can hold it anyways. We don't want to lose that farm on bottom. This is Gambit snowballing that third pressure I said earlier. Yeah, maybe not five minutes from now, but 10 minutes from now at the 14 minute mark, they take down a second tower. Azir just replaces that with one of his own. Now they can rotate into the top side red jungle and start working on the top tower or send somebody bot to pick up that farm that Tabs actually pushed in too slow, you know, you said it earlier. Urgot, no wave clear, very predictable wave management, and basically Gambit playing, uh, you know, a farm style now. Wow, 15 minutes, we've got two kills on the board. Gonna keep going back to those graphs we showed at the, t yeah, the, we like the top graphs. of the day. Spelzy did a lot of work, guys. The one thing I do want to highlight, though, the gold is very, very even for both Gambit and Elements. And we'll carry on with the story in a moment, because Cabo Shard, Omega not, and there is a little bit of toys to play with. Promise Q in a tri bush. You see Dexter hiding in the top lane. Mm -hmm. And they may want themselves a Mega Nor for dinner. It's Marcel Felt Camp, but right now it's Marcel Top Camp. Trevor. Trevor, hello? Um, I, I, I was deciding whether or not you deserve to carry on with that one. All right, Ghost has moved up. It's now a 3v2, but Mega Nor is charging. Nor is no longer tied. And we'll go back to a little bit of story time as. The engage is going to get thwarted by the hop. Um, despite Forgiven not being an SK, early tower pressure, rotating, 1, 2, and 3, and then potentially setting up for a 1, 3, 1. That was the, oh, yeah. the eloquence of SK Gaming in Spring Split. Forgiven has changed teams, and he's imposed that similar play style. Oh, yeah. Forgiven will not play your style. You will play Forgiven style. Well, but got, he's so good at it. It got them to the playoffs, and then unfortunately some misplays against... Unicorns of Love uh, cost them a, a position in the finals, but the question is then, Elements, let's assume they predicted the draft. They knew the Azir is coming. They got their hands on Sejuani. They got Vladimir, which has done, done well against the Emperor's Divide. Do Elements also have a gameplay plan against the Forgiven component? I don't like Betsy dropping this mid tower here. Gambit almost had a 3 for 0 tower change. Elements is grouping on a mid lane. This could be a dive. Well, we're about to find out. 2v4 in favor of Elements. And we do see the three members of Gambit. They continue to push top with all of the attack damage and speed that Forgiven has to play with. He unfortunately doesn't have the minions to back him up, though. Yeah, three man in top lane. Dragon comes up, though. So if this works for a trade, it's okay for Gambit. If Gambit does not get out tier two, they're actually in trouble because then they made a positional misplay. 
There's no one here to contest. Let's take a look at the top lane tower. They've run oh, out of minions. minions. Ghostly Pepper and Diamond not going to tank that one out. Not a lot of combined armor between them. However, bit in cover shot up. now. So let's see whether or not this uh, flank works out in favor of elements. Crepo, TLDR, the positional dancing and costs. Elements obviously coming out a little bit ahead in some places, but they may lose top now. Yeah, really good rotational play from Gamut here, you know, from mid to top, and now they're going on JWoww. Well, JWoww's caught out, the Nars available, Nars him into the turret, we saw Taking a flash on the bottom, now tower is secured, JWoww gets taken away, Diamond is gonna flash away, continues to survive, summon a heal, Here's Frog Froggen. forgiven keeps him out, but it's JWoww that gets the kill. We do see Dexter securing one, as now Froggen continues to chase with Hemoplague. The pop, plus the pop, just to secure it, and it's just kill after kill after kill, Gambit over Overstay their welcome. Dexter gets two. Froggen gets another. Cabochon. <laughs> so Gambit with he the, tried his best. The objective, uh, slow, methodical play, and elements with the C hero, key, kill hero, kind of role reversal from season two back in the day. But it's it seems to be working. And you see, you know, once elements has their like, grasp on a team fight, 5v5, they absolutely destroy it. You know, Vladimir jumping on Forgiven, there is nothing a short, short range AD carry can do. You know, Edward immediately, or Ghost Pepper, immediately exhausted Froggen. That exhaust ran off by the time Hemoplay popped almost, you know. Forgiven had to flash out of the fight. Basically, they just got aced 5 for 0, 5 for 1, and elements in a 5v5 is looking strong. Gambit has to avoid this. This is such an interesting dynamic. Seven kills, two dragons, and only a thousand gold up because elements have given up four of their towers. They're also down 40 CS in the AD carry, 20 top, and Diamond eats a whole lot of damage from those acid hunters. But um, you kind of think the lead should be bigger for elements, but they've given up a lot of their map. No, no, I think, I think it actually tells the story of the, of the game perfectly here. And I think Gambit greeted a little bit for that tier 2. They could have played the positions a little better. I think Betsy backed out of mid lane uh, a, little, a little early earlier. So they could have slowed down the bleeding and done more damage themselves. And as a result of that, they ended up in a situation where they were flankable and, and Elements was able to group and they just destroyed them. You saw, you know, Frogger comes from one side, Sejuani from the other side. Promiscu is so tanky. These long drawn out fights in the jungle unless they get a good Azir ultimate, is not what Gamut wants at the moment. 20 minutes on the clock, 600 gold, that's it. That's all that is between these teams. You can see the items on the bottom of your screen. I Edge picked up now for Gibbon as we set ourselves up for another team fight. Gambit, if they want to pick this one, they're going up against the five. That's the Emperor's Divide. We do see the Hemoplague down and Betsy is gone. The Azir turret is trying to slow down the pace, but Gambit have lost another member. As elements are just barreling forward, Gambit keep putting themselves in a 5v5 position against this Yu-Gi-Oh team comp that Crepo is going to. And that's, that's all right, but Betsy, he went around a corner and then went back. You know, you have to be really respectful of elements engaged because these guys will not hesitate a second to pull the trigger because that's what their comp is built on. And looking back, I think elements has crossed this river maybe once. Like in the last, last 10 minutes, they crossed it once for that tier 1 tower in Balam. But they seem to be donated kills by Gambit on their half of the map, and they're not giving anything away. And eventually, they'll take down these towers from Gambit, and then they'll, they'll start growing their gold lead. So Gambit really needs to, to figure it out, because they're on a timer. It's quite interesting, actually. If, if, if we go back again to pick some bands, we step back, and a few minutes ago I said, do, do you feel elements have got a gameplay plan for the Forgiven elements? And this defensive play, waiting for Gambit to push, waiting for Forgiven to go for towers, and then picking fights, may have been the game plan from the beginning. Elements have responded a few times to the team fights because they're not going to take towers. I mean, let's be frank. Against Wave Clear from Lucian and Azir, it's taken 21 minutes to take this top tower down, and it was uncontested. Yeah, maybe. But it, it feels like like some composition that the community flawed element or, or told the elements a lot in the past. You know, you're playing super passive, you're waiting until you charge up, and it's nice and all in the late game, but. Can this composition get punished? You know, could could Gambit have pulled this out better? Could could Diamond Prox have invaded a little more? You know, kept Dexter down because let's not forget Dexter got his one to six for free, yeah. AFK jungle, and that's that's exactly what Sejuani wants. Props to Elements to basically almost even CS under so much pressure. Really well played by them. They lost their towers, but then they traded it for kills. So. They were fine to do that, but some of these kills Gambit should have not given away. So in theory, Gambit's composition could have trumped that. But then again, Elements is playing beautifully, and yeah. they were confident going into this week. They had decent scream results, allegedly, so 
Let's see how this pans out. Coulda, shoulda, woulda, I guess. Hindsight's yeah, being being what it is. Story of my life. Uh, Diamond, <laughs> Diamond Prox. Could have made it to Worlds. Did actually complete that Magus enchantment on his jungle, Evelyn. What a detour from what we've been seeing. And this time around, Ghostly Pepper unable to connect onto Tabs. Tabs 55 CS behind. But look at that ring of vision that Elements has set up towards that top in a turret. If they find the opportunity to push it down, they can. Alternatively, Dragon's up in 40. So where do Elements set their sights, Crepo? I really like the Vladimir pick in the late game because it's such a phenomenal split pusher. He has a uh, Will of the Ancients, Ancients rather, and he has Spellman, but here's next turn. Well, Diamond Prox has already thrown down Agony's Embrace. The Death Sentence connects onto a giant tree. And Elements peel away. This has cost them absolutely nothing. The culling's down, Agony's down, the box is down. If a team fight were to break out, Elements already had a fantastic comp and a lead. And now they have three less ultimates to worry about. Yeah, Elements basically opened up the map by sending Frog on top, getting deports. Gambit tried to respawn, but they almost fell into that same trap of the 5v5 again. Now j is going bottom to fix that wave. This is a, a moment where Gambit can breathe. Top lane is uh, pushing out. Bot lane is being dealt with by uh, Elements. So this is where they have to strike. Either push him and get tier two or force a fight. But there's always the risk of a TP fight. Well, TP is available for j -Wow. And it does look like the fight is going to be happening. Gambit, five members set up. Dexter's been caught out. Diamond Prox sinks the fangs and Froggen actually flashes forward for this one. Two exhausts back and forth as Froggen is gone. Froggen gets him with the Hemoplake. The Gnar knocks elements against the wall. It's a trade one for one. Hyperkinetic position reverser holds Betsy in place. And Betsy is down as Dexter goes unstoppable at 5-0 and 3. They've traded one for two, but it's not over yet. Elements have got wards towards the top lane. They've got Dragon to peel back to. What can Elements take with the numbers advantage. Really good read by both teams. You know, Elements, if they were going to defend that tier two from the same choke point, then you lose against an Azir. If you come from two sides, they can always stop the bleeding on one. They engaged on Dexter. He went over the wall, but then threw his ulti backwards, aided Froggen, Promiscu with a flash combo on Forgiven. Forgiven auto attack maybe twice at five, immediately dropped. And then, again, 5v5 situation. Elements comes out on top. And they do manage to secure their third. Well, not yet. Let's see. Kabashi are going to try steal. Basically, is going to be safe. You're a little ahead of myself there. Third dragon of the game at 24 minutes. All right, okay, watch the this. Fight. They engage on one of the flanks. This is what you have to always have to do if you get flanked. Go on one of side, ult another, but Perniscus flashes over the zero. Double combo on Edward, on Forgiven. Nobody can say Forgiven. j flanks with his TP. Really beautiful play by Elements. Now Dexter, he went over the wall. He's, he's chasing, he's like, guys, I'm still here. I'm coming, I'm coming. Fight's already over. They take down Betsy. He's not strong enough. And, and Elements in just a good position in this game. They've made it to the late game. They could bait Baron, unless Gambit sneaks it right now. Well, Gambit have started this one. Elements are a little late to respond. 5,000 HP is below half. Dexter's 50. nearby. Flash and Smite are available. Down to 1,700. Baron's on the back line. It's stolen by Elements. Dexter manages to do it in his opening LCS game. Tabs manages to shut down Diamond and position versus Betsy back into the middle of the squad as Promiscu boots Goshu Pepper away. The prison locks up Forgiven and sends him back to the fountain. A triple kill for Tabs, a barren steal for Dexter, and Elements have completely taken control of the game. This may look bad from Gambit. Honestly, I think it was one of the better plays they could do if they did not go for that Baron right now. And Elements was a little slower to react. They could have gotten the Baron, stayed in the game. Otherwise, Elements would have pushed them out. Five man grouped, baited the Baron, and the game would be likely be over. So good read from Gamma to do that. However, 50 50 smite, Dexter, beautiful smite. I think he smited after Diamond Fox sent out his. But regardless, I think they would have lost the fight anyways. You know, they used the Azir ulti to disengage. Dexter was in the pit. The Wombo combo comes out again. And then, you know, Gamma just can't handle with that. And they're not strong enough to 1 3 1 anymore. And the follow 1 3 1 was something we saw in SK2. Oh, the invisible elements kill the invisible diamond. <laughs> He almost made it to that lantern. See, hero kill hero. Well, Elements 14 to 1. The outer turret in the bottom lane is still standing. There is, what, seven, 8,000 gold lead, but there's only two turrets secured for Elements. That's from top and middle. Because and their team is, the champions are so bad at taking towers down. And Tabs loves it when a plan comes together. He takes his revenge at the 27 minute mark. They take down the bottom tier one tower. Eventually, they get it, you know. Patience, nice and steady. Hashtag worth is definitely the case. Elements have, you know, they, they ran a little bit of a gamble in this comp. No wave clear, requiring scaling, needing time, but they got it. 
They got everything they needed, and they picked such great team fights. And this is what I like about the Baron change. Like, you can play these comps that don't usually give you an opening to break open a siege. But you can get Baron, you can control an objective, get that objective, and that leads to more sieging potential. Sieging into an Azir is incredibly hard, even with Baron creeps out there. So they'll have to get introduce a split push component, so they knock on two doors at once, and then basically barge in once the Azir is not there. And they're doing this, you know, some pressure bot. I, I imagine they'll send Frog and split pushing top buffing creeps or somebody to that bot lane right now, open up the defense. But at this point, they might as well straight up, straight up dive too, but it's dangerous against an Azir. Yeah, with that Baron buff on, even though cabochard has got that teleport advantage, not really going to see any massive opportunities for him. And we break the 10,000 gold lead. It's been slow going, but elements have inched away, chipped away a lead, built up this mountain that Gambit now needs to overcome. They have one kill on the board. One kill on the board. The worst part is they're not going to get any more kills. JWoww, super tanky. Frog is super tanky. And has a pool, you know, twice. Alistar is super tanky. You know, Tabs, he has a frozen heart. He's an 80 carry with a frozen heart. And they're going in. Well, let's see who they decide to focus. Betsy gets caught up by the Hema Plague. They jump onto Ghost Who Pepper. Diamonds on the side lane gets a huge Agony's Embrace. That's a three man Nar up against the wall. Promise Q's in a little bit of trouble. But Froggen is sustaining his way through Betsy's damage. Another kill for Elements. Another tower for Elements. Baron Buff has worn out. But when you've got a 5v4, there's no one that can stop you. Gambit on the inhibitor turret. Uh, elements on Gambit's inhibitor turret in the top lane. And they should be able to secure the inhibitor as well. Another great team fight. That's not the man you want, Gosu. Elements, the base is cracked open. Elements, fantastic showing from the 15 to 30 minute mark. Yeah, and so tanky, you know, they just dove two towers and they barely got below. One, one of the members got below half HP and then Frog and maybe a little lower too. And just shows, you know, the strength of the composition from Elements here in the lake. Oh. Oh, 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 we'll ignore that one. Lantern's there, Lantern's not relevant, and Tabs he gets another one. Didn't fail the combo, he ran out of mana for Q. It's the worst feeling in the world. You, you, you tap W, you tap Q, and nothing happens. You're like, oh, I'm that guy. But luckily for him, it happened when he's 12,000 gold ahead. So. It did, it did indeed. I thought there was Tabs that just got out of the way of Ghost Who Pepper's spells. <laughs> JWoww uses the scuttle, the scuttle grab taxi get out. to scuttle taxi. And then a defensive flash. Elements get their 16th kill, and ironic, ironic, the invisible death, or the invisible kills onto Diamond. You feel so safe when you're Evelyn, no one can see you, but if there's five people in a bush, it will eventually. And again, just that ring of vision. Crapper, every single time I look at this mini-map, Elements are pushing their wards deeper and deeper towards the objectives that they set their sights on. Yeah, exactly, and now they're, they're getting ready for their fourth dragon, and the, the thing is, at this point, Gambit has to stop the bleeding. They have to get a dragon, or eventually Elements will get five. But grouping around an objective means 5v5. And unless you get a really solid zero team and choke point, you're not going to win a fight. And even then, Elements at this point is so tanky. It's so hard. Promise you going in. Uh, he does manage to get the combo. Betsy instantly throws down the hourglass. The lantern should time out before he can get to it. Not even going to be needed. Now Diamond Prox is in trouble. Elements are just running him down. Gets thrown back into the river by Tabs, who's now 5-0 and 7. Promise Q, another new support on the stage, 0-0-15. Zero, zero, More than two times the impressive score that James Bond would have put on the map. And Dragon, not even a, a priority here for Elements. Really solid itemization as well. We said earlier, Alice are so tanky, you know. All Elements need to, need to do is find an engagement window. They put the Aegis of Legion on, on Dexter, and that means both top lane and support can build uh, Righteous Glory and get that engaged because Sejuani is really good at following up against too. So they have so many engaged tools on these different roles. Alistar is usually really hard to get into people, but with nice solid flashes, really good use of Righteous Glory and then blocking the lantern. Promise Q is playing a fearless game and it's really nice to see that for his first time in the LCS ever. And it's fantastic to see the, the follow-up performance from Mithy in the previous game. You know, Mithy of course returning to the stage. He's been, he's playing on a world stage as well. Promise Q, this is his first match against Gambit, against Gosu, Pepper and Forgiven, two of the most seasoned players in the LCS. In lane, held his own. And just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. A but wordy, a wordy success. Exactly. The thing that we do have to say though, if you look at elements, you look at this game and this play style, they were given a lot of time. They were given the freedom to get to this position. And I do feel they had a, a great read on Gambit. Picks and bans seem to go somewhat predictable. They got some comfortable picks. I mean, 
the, the, the Vladimir's done great into the Sazir. I don't know. You should, I, I think give it... Oh, hang on. Froggen's getting caught. Well, let's see. Exhaust is out. Sanguine is available, as is the Hourglass. Froggen holding on to him. Throws down the Hemo Plate. Then he pulls away. Hemo Plate's going to pop. The Hourglass oh. is in a moment, and it's an instant kill there. Now forced to flash away. It's not over yet. Kerber Shot gets reversed in, but he's about to become a Mega Gnar. He crunches over the wall. We see Acid Hunter after Acid Hunter connecting. Tabs gets himself to what looked like a jump on Froggen turned out to be a jump on Gambit. It's not done yet as Dexter has the Glacial Prison. Is he going to throw it out? We do see Promise Q maybe going to find him. Conqueror, the King of the Sands. Now still wants to look. This is a teleport from JWoww as well. That is a massive, massive cow. And the wall is going to keep Dexter out for a moment or two, but it's simply not enough. 22 to 1 in the opening game of the summer split. Elements putting on a statement of a performance. I think Power of Evil was a little early with his quote about it's going to be a bloodbath. Uh, same day, wrong match. This is really, really brutal. But we have to remember how this came to be, right? It didn't. It, this game was by no means a complete stop. There was a really, really crucial point in the game where Elements managed to hang on just enough to equalize that tower goal lead loss. Uh, gold loss router with kills and then they got into the late game. Of course they're gonna win the ga late game But we saw that last season as well elements kept going for that late game comps, but they got punished sometimes But looks like they've learned to adapt and a uh, really really solid performance really impressed by promise Q as well and uh Froggen, the only member returning from Elements with 100% death participation. Wow. Uh, Froggen feeder. One more team fight, and we see Gambit throwing everything at Elements. It's just not enough. Froggen's in trouble. He will go down for the second time. Definitely the feeder on the Elements squad as Elements bite off a little more than they can chew this time around. We've seen two games ending around the 36, 37 minute mark. Elements really just trying to keep up tradition here, I think as they are going to delay this. Promise you comes in to save Tabs. Tabs low on mana. Forgiven looking for more. He's got red buff. That's Good another guy, kill Promiscu. on the board. Promise you, the hype is no longer there. You've given up the third kill of the game to Gambit. 0, 1, and 17. Super minions in middle. Super minions bottom. Just a matter of time before they close us up. Minions are... Maybe, wow, Emperor's Divide just to protect this inhibitor. And I think that should be enough. Yes, it is. We, but we held our breath. We held our breath there. <laughs> I don't want to be the guy that predicts that wrong, you know. PvE, you know, predictable minions. <laughs> but uh, let's take a step back here. This game is obviously uh, turning to a very one-sided show from Elements right now. I just want to take a look back at the champion select. You know, they gave a zero away. They seem to have a plan for it, basically either swapping it into the team or having Froggen be able to flank from different sides or pull under it. We know that Betsy doesn't get the most resources or side lane farm on Gamut while he still is the crux of their composition. Kind of makes sense, but again, we see, we had questions, right? What is Forgiving going to do? Well, the answer is exactly the same like he did in SK. What's Cabochard going to do? Farm a lot, but JWoww, in, in a lane matchup that is usually dominated by Gnar, he kept on really well, even CS didn't need any attention from his jungle ball, and allowed Dexter to play around the bot lane. They shut Forgiven down by having counter gank potential and TPs ready. Froggen roamed a little later than Betsy, but he joined the party as well, and Managed to make it work. Yeah, work and well. the interesting thing about that, Forgiven imposes the Forgiven element uh, on the game within the first 20 minutes. And Gambit had some mid to late game poor shot calling in the spring split. And you can argue overstaying for that top lane in a turret it was one of the big turning points. So it was maybe it's really shot close calling. though. You have to remember that was really close. If they escaped there, it was a nice trade. And I like Gambit's sequence in which they took the towers. I think that was done well. I think the ID was right. The execution was slightly lacking. Let's not forget, uh, Gambit went out on search. Some members went out on social media, said they had a little trouble practicing. But Elements going out for the final push here. Well, that definitely seems to be the case. Cabo Shot's doing what he can as Mega Knock. He's going to throw three members of Elements forward as Betsy's going to knock them upward. Cabo Shot does survive until that last Acid Hunter from Tabs. Another kill for Froggen as the Emo Plague is now ticking away. Ghost Who Pepper's trying to get out. Froggen is chasing all the way forward. The Hourglass is on the steps, and that's going to be his death. He even pulls away for a few more swag <laughs> points. Elements on the back line, destroying the Nexus. Massive smiles from Elements as they pick up their first win in summer. Not only does Promise Q show up on the big stage against Gambit, against players with such a wealth of experience, the whole team just seems to be, they work that composition well.
I'm taking a quick look here, you know. JWoww involved in 19 out of 26 kills, you know. Dexter involved in 20. Froggen involved in 20. Tabs involved in 18, that's the least. And then 20 assists uh, coming out of Promiscu as well. We see this this result, you know, it explains the team compositions. Everybody wants to be in those fights. Everybody yeah. wants those assists. Very high kill participation for every member in Elements Comp. And it just highlights Gambit couldn't keep them spread, you know. They let them group and... It, it also tells the story of the early game about how individualized and compartmentalized every single lane was. Everybody was left to their own devices. Neither Dexter, because he's on Sejuani, could make an impact, or Diamond, arguably because of his decision making, to not really challenge Dexter. Uh, I don't want to call. I don't want to call a Diamond not. here because I don't know. But I, I think there was a possibility for and maybe some counter jungle. All three, all three lanes were pushing in favor of Gambit towards Elements. You know, you, you play for mid to late game and then elements outplay you in team fights. I mean, that's sort of the, the story of this match. But we'll see how Gambit evolves, obviously. And adding a new new player uh, with this, such a, a distinctive playstyle like yes. Forgiven, but really good at that particular playstyle, needs some time to work. We'll see a couple weeks in, week three, week four. That's when I'm really going to start judging yes. Gambit. That's when I think they've had enough time to practice with Forgiven. But let's see if also elements, are they going to continue the same style? Because you don't want to be linear in this style, because then eventually in drafts you will get punished. But so far, so good. Yeah, and I think, you know, in recent weeks, the passive playstyle seems to be yielding slightly less results because the more aggressive, proactive teams seem to be able to find their way into the game. But the one thing you also got to step back, as you did mention right near the end there, Gambit, they have said they had some problems, you know, getting themselves set up, getting themselves practiced. For a team that had, let's say, difficulties of whatever degree, they still put up a decent performance. They played around Forgiven. As you said, they got an early lead. They got early map control. And then some small misplays here and there uh, cost them control. With a bit more refinement, maybe they could get themselves into even better positions in future games. Yeah, like solid rotational play, right? They knocked down half HP on every tower, took down bot lane, sent somebody mid, you know, notice that tabs that that one moment where Tabs was hesitating, do I go mid, do I go yeah. bot, you know, they took that mid tower, then they went for top. Betsy wanted to facilitate that top tower by roaming, but he got caught off in the in the river, and that allowed Elements to push in, just get that one tower, some breathing room, you know. Every time Gambit left a little room to breathe, but they almost suffocated Elements completely, and we saw that in Spring Split when we played against them. We played a similar comp, very laid back, very good late game. If yeah. you look at the comps, you're like, yeah, we're going to wreck them late game team fights. Didn't happen because Diamond had Nidalee. He was constantly in our face, and I lacked that a bit. You know, I would like to see more aggression from Diamond, especially in these triple push scenarios. Yeah, definitely needs to be the case. Simply not a factor for Gambit. A lot more questions to answer. I think as a team, you know, we saw some very good things. I think uh, uh, Edward now goes through Pepper in lane. Was it a lot more impressive than I feel he has been? Um, Maybe it is a testament because of the matchup. You know, Ur got a little, a little easier to land those death sentences on, arguably. But it was good to see the confident play. It was good to see Gosu really going for it. Mm -hmm. When we saw him leaving Pinoy at times towards the latter half of the spring split. So, I, I don't think difference. I don't think we can fault him for much. Yeah. You know, yes, those hooks were predictable slightly because Tabs had to walk up for minions, but he landed them. You know, there's right. not more you can do at that point. Hook, flay, out sustain, out poke. There was a 25 CS lead. Forgiven, I think he could have played for that BF pickaxe if he wanted. He opted not to. Tabs had a very late tier, so the bot lane was definitely winning, and that's what prompted the rotational play, remember. Bot tower goes down yeah. first, then mid, then top. So definitely... Good bot lane play. Uh, I really, really look forward to seeing more 2v2s. But uh, he got cut out by the team composition. What is Lucian going to do against the Sejuani, Vladimir, Maokai, Flash W? Yeah. You know, everybody wants to get forgiven, and there's not enough damage coming out to punish because Elements is so tanky. I like that. And around the 30-minute the mark, I recall you saying, well, no one's going to die anymore. There's simply too much tankiness and too many options. Unless you're under the fountain. Uh, Mo multiple pools, multiple hourglasses. We'll, we'll give them that. I mean, feeder Froggen. Of the four deaths in Elements, Froggen gave up three of them. I think he earned those, to be fair. So uh, strong strong showing from Elements. Gambit, unfortunately, drop their game. We're going to throw this one over to the analyst desk to take a look at Elements.